Hello, Tech Sanders with the Light Zone Project. And this video is a continuation on our series on the Relight tool. And in this video, we'll turn our attention to the Detail Slider, the Depth Slider, and the Fuzz Slider. As previously mentioned, the Detail Slider basically enhances local contrast, so it works like a pre-sharpener. So if I slide this way over, I think you see that we're getting a lot of local contrast and an intimation of detail. You need to be careful with this slider and this is image dependent. In images that have relatively flat lighting like this one and a lower dynamic range, you can get away with higher values. However, in a very contrasty image, you need to be careful how you use this slider. It can start leading to halo effects, and especially if you are subsequently going to use a sharpening tool, you need to be careful how much you push this slider. I typically use it somewhere between 1.5, which is its default setting, and 2.5, and I don't usually go much over 2.5, but again, that's image dependent. Most of the time I like to stay down around 2.1. Now let's turn our attention to the depth slider. I mentioned in the first video that the depth and the fuzz sliders were the two most mysterious ones. Both of them have to do with contrast as well. In the help files that Lightcrafts wrote for this tool, the depth slider is said to control how flat or deep the lighting in your image winds up being. The deep is a little bit of an ambiguous term, but flat certainly suggests contrast. Flat lighting is low contrast and high contrast, obviously, in this case, is going to give you this better sense of depth. The default setting is all set all the way to the right. When we pull this back down, I think you see that it softens the image up so indeed this is also a kind of contrast control tool. Now let's turn our attention to the fuzz slider. The fuzz slider according to the help files controls how fuzzy in quotes the edges between your light and dark areas are. Clearly this suggests that it is some kind of a radius tool. The default setting is all the way on the left hand side at point 0.1. When I slide this all the way over, you probably hardly saw any difference in the image at all. And really to see the differences, we have to increase magnification. So let's do that now. I'm going to go to 1 to 1. And let's let this process. And in fact, I'm going to go beyond 1 to 1. You see our little red rectangle here that shows you how much of the image we're actually looking at. I'm going to go beyond one to one. Now we're looking at a very small portion of the overall image. And I'm going to center that right over here on this post and this road closed sign. Let's do it like this. Note that. The histogram has changed. This histogram up here refers to this little red rectangle, not to the whole image. So the histogram changes as you change magnification. So now let's take a look at the detail, depth, and fuzz sliders and how they work together. At the default settings, this is what the image will look like. Notice in this dark area, there's just a little bit of detail, a little bit of detail here, and etc. If I increase the detail slider like this, now you see, well, yeah, that definitely affects the contrast. But it also tends to darken up some of it so much that you lose your details. Let's roll that back. Now I'm at the 2.2 level and I think you see that when you use a more modest setting you still retain some of this 
detail in here and here, other of these dark areas, but you are popping out a little bit more contrast in some of these spots here in the fence post, etc. Let's look at the depth slider if we slide it all the way to the left. Now you see that that definitely softens the image up. You're getting more detail back in here, but it's also flattening the contrast. So the depth slider is something that you can play with. You don't have to settle for it, be set all the way over at 64. You can use it in conjunction with the detail slider, and in fact, everything in this tool works together. So if we were to adjust the highlights and shadows as well, then that would make a difference. But in this case, I'm just going to keep with these three sliders. If we move that around, we may come to a happy medium between increasing our contrast, but then retaining a little bit more detail in some of these areas here. If we move the fuzz slider now all the way up like this, It's hard to see what happened, but if you look over here at the road closed sign, particularly let me go back up to the depth slider at its default setting. Look at what happens when I move the fuzz slider. With it in its default setting, this is a little less contrasty, and when I move it up, that road close sign suddenly has a little bit more pop to it. So you use these three sliders in conjunction with one another. A little bit similarly to the way you, you might use certain kinds of sharpening tools to fine tune the local contrast and the detail contrast when using the Relight tool. And that's one of the things that makes the Relight tool a great tool because unlike the zone mapper tool where you're just using it to create large scale changes in uh, contrast and tonalities over the entire image, the Relight tool lets you separate out shadows, highlights, and then further separate out details and really tweak these details in a very fine way. Let's go back to fit We'll take a look at the image one last time overall. You see the histogram change. Now this refers to the entire image. You see that this is the result we have if we turn this off. There we are. We turn it on, and there we are. 